Today I'm going to be doing a plaque using lost foam casting. And I'm doing it a little bit different than I've done it in the past. I'm going to try something new today. This um, is the foam that I use. It's regular builder's insulation from Lowe's Home Depot. And it has a film that protects it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that film on the foam. I'm going to glue this paper that I, I worked on that on Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to print that on. I, I printed it on the paper. I'm going to lay the back of it and put it onto here with uh, this contact adhesive foam so it doesn't dissolve it. And then uh, I'm going to cut it out from there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the contact adhesive on the um, on the foam and on the back of this paper. And hopefully not on my camera. Okay, a minutes to just set up. Okay. Okay, now since I sprayed sticky stuff out on the outside of here, I'm going to go ahead and cut through it a little bit and pull the plastic up so I don't have to deal with that stickiness. What I'm doing is I'm going down into the pattern about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And that's going to create my border here. Now I'm going to trace around the letters. Okay, here I am set up to put the pattern in the in the sand and I'm going to use pay bond which is oil bonded sand and I don't know why I'm going to do this either but I'm going to run it through this grease strainer for um, some facing sand which probably isn't really necessary since I already put the uh, sheet rock mud on there. But it would give me a nice fine sand right against the pattern. Or right against the sheet rock mud.
Usually I use a round wire, but I couldn't find a round wire. And I'm only going down to where the pattern is, which is down to the cope. So I'm just going to hold my finger right there and put a bunch of little vents in. shrinkage that the S there is not there some shrinkage right there in the middle or or porosity or whatever like it's gonna be do over. See the holes in the back. That's because I'll out and then it shrunk from there. Other than that, the rabbit came out nice. Looks like it came out. Looks pretty perfect to me. That baby's still hot. I poured it last night about 10.30 and it's 7.30 this morning and it is still almost too hot to touch. not perfect is it has a little bit of a marking through there that who knows what that was caused from but I'm pretty happy with it now I've got to clean up cut the sprue and riser off and uh, clean it up sandblast it and then put some patina on it
See, now I'm going to show you how I'm gluing on it. I put gum gluing on it to work as a base after I got it sandblasted. Just have the metal clean and, and uh, get your cloth nice and wet. Put it on the uh, metal and it turns it nice and dark. Then you rinse it with water and you can rub it with steel wool if you want to uh, get it to where you want the darkness that you want. I'm going to base and then I have some other chemicals to make a patina on the, uh, on the main. Picked up my gum balloon at either Gander Mountain or Dick's Dick's uh, Sporting Goods, and one of them was a whole lot cheaper. I don't remember which, but one of them was a whole lot cheaper. I can't believe how much difference it was. Okay, the first video I took of the patina before I started didn't come out. So now we have it with the patina already on. But what I'm doing is a hot process. And I have, uh, it's called cupric sulfate. And ammonium chloride. Which I got from the science company. I'll give you a link for them. Because they have some nice patina recipes on their website. And this particular recipe comes out to a pretty blue and it's a hot process so don't tell anyone but I put this in the oven to 200 degrees and then I heat it up in this tin can on the stove to 190 for the part of it and then I just brushed the liquid onto this and then I'll go and rinse it off with water and see what it looks like just keep rinsing it and putting it on until we get the fit you want. And then of course I'm going to take a sander and the face of it so that the lettering, the bunny, and the edge is going to be a bright brass. So it's looking good. See you shortly. Okay, here it is with the edges buffed and I'm ready to put the shellac on. I'm using a product called Inkerlac, and it's really good for the UV um, and protection. For the patina, I ended up just on the one coat of the chemicals on top of the um, gun bluing, and then I put some more um, gun bluing. I did a wire brush on it because it, it turned really green. Uh, so I didn't really like that too much so I put a wire brush on it which brought out some of the put some gum bluing on it so it turned out more like a nice brown color so that's what we're going with and I think it looks pretty good You can brush this stuff on or you can spray it too. I prefer to brush it probably because I don't have a sprayer. One thing nice about this is it dries really quickly. 
so I can do another coat in an hour or so.